The other big story this morning, of course, the United States uh, ended its longest war uh, in history. Every single U.S. member, service member, is now out of Afghanistan with the last flight taking off one minute before midnight today, Tuesday, August 31st. That was the deadline for U.S. troops to actually withdraw after nearly 20 years in Afghanistan. Our D.C. correspondent, both the Imam, uh, has more on this uh, difficult evacuation. And now the Taliban is... Uh, back in power fully no american troops on the ground no boots on the ground there anymore after 20 years both of them. That's it, Mike. Absolutely. And what we know is that President Biden is facing some criticism for this move because we know fewer than 200 Americans, but still Americans are still in Afghanistan facing an imminent threat now that U.S. troops are gone. If we recall President Biden saying uh, if there are American citizens left, we're going to, quote, stay to get them all out. Those words now coming back to haunt him a bit because you have those Americans who are still still there and the U.S. troops completely gone. But that doesn't mean that they aren't committed to helping them get out. It just means they're going to have to do it through other means, maybe through a covert operation, as we know the military has the capability to do. Also, the tens of thousands of Afghans, our allies who've been helping us over the years, also still there. More on that in just a moment. Uh, what we do know is that more than 120,000 Americans, Afghans and others, were evacuated these past several weeks. Fewer than, again, 200 American citizens believed to still be there on the grounds. Attacks continued throughout this final stretch, including 13 U.S. service members and many Afghans killed in a deadly suicide attack on Thursday. U.S. officials have said ISIS-K was responsible for the airport bombing and five rockets fired at the airport Sunday. When a U.S. drone hit a vehicle near the airport, also on Sunday, as many as 10 Afghan civilians, including children, died. While the U.S. has pulled out, officials say humanitarian and counterterrorism operations will continue. Secretary of State Antony Blinken said the U.S. diplomatic mission to Afghanistan would be transferred at this time to Doha, and from there, they will continue efforts to help Americans, foreign nationals, and Afghans at risk leave Afghanistan if they choose to. Officials called it a massive military, diplomatic, and humanitarian undertaking. Take a listen. I'm here to announce the completion of our withdrawal from Afghanistan and the end of the military mission to evacuate American citizens, third country nationals, and vulnerable Afghans. The last C-17 lifted off from Hamad Karzai International Airport on August 30th this afternoon at 3.29 p.m. East Coast time. And the last manned aircraft is now clearing the airspace above Afghanistan. A new chapter of America's engagement with Afghanistan has begun. It's one in which we will lead with our diplomacy. The military mission is over. A new diplomatic mission has begun. We will continue our humanitarian assistance to the people of Afghanistan. The conflict has taken a terrible toll on the Afghan people. Millions are internally displaced. Millions are facing hunger, even starvation. The COVID-19 pandemic has also hit Afghanistan hard. The United States will continue to support humanitarian aid to the Afghan people. Consistent with our sanctions on the Taliban, the aid will not flow, flow through the government, but rather through independent organizations, such as UN agencies and NGOs. I've gotten everybody out that we wanted to get out, and there still would have been people who would have been disappointed with that. It's a, it's, it's a tough situation. But I want to emphasize again that simply because we have left, that doesn't mean the opportunities for both Americans that are in Afghanistan that want to leave and, uh, and Afghans who want to leave, they will not be denied that opportunity. I think our Department of State is going to work that very hard in the days and weeks ahead. Now, President Biden plans to speak this afternoon to the public. We can expect that he will touch on honoring the lives lost during this mission over the years. We know that more than 2,400 U.S. military deaths, more than 20,000 injured. We can expect that he'll talk about that, what's taken place over the past four administrations. And also, we'll expect that he will talk about the heroic efforts in this final stretch with the military and the work that they did on the ground, which has been incredible. You know, 100,000 people evacuated in a week, couple of weeks span. Mm -hmm. uh, General McKenzie kind of touched on it a little bit, and I'm pretty sure uh, uh, President Biden is going to talk about it, or at least be asked about it if he accepts any questions later on today. But 
Uh, what's the administration saying about the Afghans who, who, who served as allies to the U.S. and others uh, while over there, and, and they never made it to the airport, and they want to get out of Afghanistan? Mm -hmm. Well, we know that number that you mentioned, that 120,000, is mostly made up of Afghans, but there's still tens of thousands that are still on the ground there who do want to leave. Right now, they do face uh, high threats. It, it, is, it is a tricky and difficult situation. Some of them unable or unwilling to get to the airport by the deadline, and now looking at the United States and, and reaching out for help in whatever way they can. They're calling any type of connection they have to the United States. We also have on the other side of this, a humanitarian crisis in a way. You have all of these people who have been evacuated, uh, more than 120,000, mostly Afghans, as I mentioned, and they are now in refugee holding camps, right, in, in areas where they're now sifting through the paperwork they need to go through. We know that the babies have been delivered. We know that families have been separated. So much has mm -hmm. gone on on the humanitarian front. So this is difficult pretty much from every single angle. But what they have stressed is even though this war on the military side is over, the humanitarian efforts will continue through Doha. That's where it will take place at this time. But we can't stress how difficult this will be, being that you don't have U.S. troops there, that you have guns in the hands, potentially, United States guns that mm -hmm. were given to Afghan forces, now potentially in the hands of Taliban and ISIS-K. And so combating all of those things, plus that you don't have control of the airport anymore, uh, we can't stress how difficult it will be. They will have to go through very, um, uh, very covert, you could say military tactics to get those fewer than uh, 200 Americans out, as well as those tens of thousands of Afghans. And there's no question, Mike, that this is going to be difficult and as heartbreaking as it's been. Unfortunately, it may get even worse as uh, we know that potentially some ISIS-K members will be released from prison. Well, I, I will say this as a former military member, uh, even though we don't have boots mm -hmm. on the ground over there, you best believe we have shoes on the ground over there in some kind of way. We do have some sort of resources to at least get back some type of intelligence. Let's hope that's the case. Of course, I'm not in the know when it comes to that type yeah. of stuff, but that has been the M.O. for the United States when it comes to these type of situations over the years. Both of you, with the very latest from and Washington, D.C., we thank you very much. Go, go ahead, both Sure. Well, I was going to say, Mike, you know, in the past 20 years, uh, just to touch on what you're saying, drones have been used. We know that the military has upgraded the way it operates, too. So to your mm -hmm. point, uh, it may be boots on the ground. It may be up in the sky, but they are keeping tabs in some way, in some form, no doubt about that. And President Biden has committed to getting the Americans out and helping the Afghan allies. So the whole world is watching right now to see if this, in fact, will happen. Yeah, the, the war is over, uh, but the situation far from over when it comes to our involvement mm -hmm. uh, in Afghanistan. You best believe that. Both the imam with, with the latest from D.C. Thank you, both of them.